Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT Geek YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dar and as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode of my Azure Arc uh, Deep Dive series. Coming towards the end of a series, if I'm, if I'm honest, um, we've, well, how many episodes have we done? We, 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 we've done, this is the 12th episode. Um, and I've got a couple more kind of topics I want to talk about, mainly the VMware vSphere integration, um, which we're going to cover, but I'm, I'm kind of, I think I've covered a lot within this. I've covered, you know, Resource Bridge, I covered Azure Arc, um, the services that support now to choose those services, Azure Arc enable servers, Kubernetes, and now doing data services. So I think I've gone through a lot of these sort of services and features of in a deep level as well. I've done demos throughout. So I think I'm kind of planning my next series. I'm not going to quite announce yet. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to kind of start planning that and working on that. I've got some other content coming out as well. The, the Nerdio Wednesday series that I'm doing every Wednesday is a new Nerdio video. Um, but also I've got some exam topic stuff I want to work on as well and focus on. So, um, watch out for that space. So without further ado, let's get started with today's episode though. So this is part two of the Azure Arc enabled data services. We did, we went through, um, sort of introduction overview of data services, you know, connected, um, non-connected services, stuff like that. Um, so we're going to focus on in today's episode deployment, connectivity modes, and sizing guidance. And then again, we're just going to do a bit of an overview in, in the well, not an overview. We're going to actually go into the demo, look at some of the other features we can, you know, management features we can integrate with the virtual machine that's in VMware uh, on uh, hosted on vSphere uh, or, or VMware on premises essentially. Um, so let's start off by talking about again. It's going to, going to kind of a bit of an overview, but this is um, it's different from the overview from from us. This is a deployment overview essentially. Um, so the deployment steps that you're going to find when you're deploying as your Act Data Services is first of all, step one is to plan uh, your your deployment. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link in the description to sort of as as like a, the guide that you should follow when you, when you're planning your deployment. Step two is to install the different client tools that you want to use um, for, for, your, for your deployment. Uh, then step three, you need to register the Microsoft Azure, Microsoft Azure Arc data provider for the subscriptions where you want Azure Arc data uh, enabled services to be, or where you want them to be deployed. Step four is to access a Kubernetes cluster, um, which is the one you want to integrate into Azure We're using Azure Arc enabled services. And then step five is to create an Azure Arc uh, data controller in direct connectivity uh, mode, there's some prerequisites to that. You then start creating your data services, and then step seven, you can you can you can connect with the Azure Data Studio. As you begin planning to deploy uh, Azure Arc enabled data services, it's important to properly understand your database uh, and its workloads and, and your sort of business requirements to those workloads. An example, you know, you need to consider availability, business continuity, and capacity requirements for memory, CPU, storage, and things like that for your workloads. And you need to carefully prepare the infrastructure to support the workloads based on what your business requirements are as well. And uh, so let's talk about the different connectivity modes now. So there are multiple options for the sort of degree of connectivity from the ARC from Azure Arc enabled data service environments to Azure. And, and Azure requirements vary based on business policy, gov governance, uh, or government regulations as well, um, or sort of the availability of, uh, of network connectivity to Azure. You can choose from, from different connectivity to modes. So we've got directly connected and indirectly connected, and we mentioned both of those in the last episode. So the connectivity mode is going to provide you that flexibility to choose how data is sent to Azure and how users interact with and Azure Arc data controllers. Uh, depending on the connectivity mode that is chosen, some functionality of Azure Arc enabled data services might not be available. Um, so I wanted to do a bit of a deeper dive into the connectivity mode, which is why we've got this table. Um, and because it shows us a bit more information, a bit more deeper dive. We kind of did an overview of it yesterday. So if we look, that there's, again, apologies, there's, there's a bit that's gone off, but you can see most of it. The table goes a bit further down the slide, but you can see all the information. So um, we've got indirectly connected mode first. So this is indirectly connected mode, and it's going to offer most of the sort of management services that are local in your environment with no, di no direct connectivity to Azure. <clears throat> it's obviously available, um, and, and sort of typical use cases you see a sort of on-premises data centers that don't allow any sort of connectivity in or out of that data region uh, or you know the data center due to business or sort of regulatory compliance 
Uh, and we talk about how we, we spoke about how dairy sent to Azure, and it's kind of manual, basically. You have to manually export it. We then have directly connected, as I mentioned. So this is directly connected to Azure, and it offers all those services that are, you know that, that were in Azure. Obviously, it's currently available, and from a typical use case perspective, um, organizations who who use public cloud um, edge site locations as well, where the internet connectivity is typically present and um, and allowed. And again, data can be automatically and continuously sent to Azure. So there's not not any manual intervention. And from a, there's a number of like never connected, so there's no data can be sent to to or from Azure. So this isn't currently supported. Um, it's a proper air gapped kind of environment, which is a typical use case, and data is never sent to Azure either. So this is a bit of an overview of the sizing guide now before we finish up this episode. So there's going to be quite a slight change. I think there was originally was going to do a demo, but I'm going to going to leave the demo to the next episode. Um, because I've got a couple more episodes, I want to kind of spread out my demos a little bit. Anyway, with sizing, when planning for sort of deployment um, of your Azure Act data services, you need to plan the correct amount of sort of compute, memory, and storage. Uh, and these resources are obviously required for for the data controller, the SQL managers, and the, the PostgreSQL servers as well. Because Azure Rack enabled data services deploys on Kubernetes, you have to you have to have sort of flexibility uh, of being able to add capacity to your Kubernetes clusters over time, uh, you know, by compute nodes or, or storage. Um, and you know, there's a, what I'll do is there's a, there's, a, there's a guide that kind of explains that, and I'll I'll put the link in the description as well, so you can get more sort of common requirements um, from from that. Uh, just to continue, just again, we're just going to a little bit more on sizing, a little bit more of an overview. So there's, there's a cause uh, numbers must be an integer value greater than or equal to, to one. Um, so when you deploy with Azure CLI, um, you use the power of two, um, the power of two number to set that and those memory values and those specific sort of suffixes you need to know are KI, MI and GI. Uh, a minimum size for Azure, Azure Act enabled data services deployment would be considered to be the Azure Act data service controller plus one SQL managed instance plus one PostgreSQL server. And for this configuration, you need to at least 16 gigagram four cores of available, available capacity <coughs> on your Kubernetes cluster. You should ensure that you have a minimum Kubernetes node size of at least 8 gig of RAM and four cores and a sort of sum total capacity of 16 gig of RAM available across all of your sort of Kubernetes nodes. An example is, you know, you could have one node at 32 gigabit of RAM and four cores, you could have two nodes of 16 gig of RAM and four cores each. The data controller is, is a collection of pods that are deployed to your Kubernetes cluster to provide sort of an API, and the controller service, the bootstrapper, and the monitoring databases and dashboards. Uh, and again, um, there's 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 kind of a lot of memory values and CPU values. A bit more, too much detail and too much information for for this sort of um, slide. So again, the link that I've, I've shared kind of explains all that. And with PostgreSQL, so with each PostgreSQL node, you must have a minimum resource request where you've got memory of two five six MI and at least one core. Uh, so that's it for this episode. Uh, like I said, no no demo. Um, we're gonna we're gonna kind of skip the demo for this episode. It's the only episode I'm not doing a demo, and we're gonna we're gonna kind of cover that a couple more things. We've got two more episodes in this. Where we're gonna focus talking about VM where I've already shown that demo, but we're gonna do some demos around some more VM uh, VM management. Um, so again, loads of useful links in my description. Um, drop me a comment around the video if you like it, you don't like it. You know what you want to see more, what you want to see less of. Is there any other topics you want me to kind of cover with Azure Arc in the future? And I've also put a link to joining my membership. I've got a sort of membership where I do the member-only videos are all related to Microsoft certification. So I've got AZ900, MS900, lots more to come as well. I've got AZ140, AZ700, SE400, I think SE3 on SE200, SE300, SE100. So lots, lots of exam content and more, much more to come. So thank you very much for watching. Until next time, goodbye.